everybody. Welcome to a new series. I'm starting where I solicit your board game hot takes and talk about them, discuss them on this video. So I sent out a tweet on Twitter the other day asking, what are your board game hot takes? And uh, I've gathered a few. I'm going to talk about a couple of them in today's video, and I'll do the others later on. Maybe in the future, I'll have a, th have a very specific idea that I want to talk about, maybe a specific designer or style of game. I don't know. But the idea is to generate discussion, and uh, feel free to comment below with, of course, your responses to my responses to these hot takes about board games. I hope you find it enjoyable. Let's start with the very first one from, uh, and this is uh, makes perfect sense, uh, the Board Game Hot Takes podcast, which uh, I'm sure they, yeah, they, they certainly would have some hot takes, I assume. And they give us three of them. Uh, they say balance in games is not that important, backing Kickstarters is a terrible bet, and randomness is fun. Let's take those one by one. Starting with balance in games is not that important, uh, which I think is an overly broad statement that doesn't mean much. It's hard. It's hard to take. Uh, I'm going to give this a mildness rating, uh, or rather a mild rating. I don't think it's uh, particularly hot take. It's more of a tepid take, uh, because what does it mean that balance is not that important? It's like saying mechanisms are not that important. Well. Sure, yeah, in some cases, mechanisms of the game aren't as important as other factors, but they're still kind of fundamental to the idea of a game, and I think balance is similar. I think the more interesting discussion is what balance means. Now, when I say that balance is both fundamental and not that important, we can think of it in this way, right? If there's no chance of one person winning, then it kind of ceases to be a game. I don't know. It becomes, it, it, it approaches the border of what a game is, uh, which is typically where you have a winner or loser and there's some chance of one of those things happening. So some amount of balance is required. The extreme one way starts to look not like a game, but you can't only have balance. Like flipping a coin and calling heads or tails is a game uh, that is given a perfectly balanced coin is perfectly balanced, but it's not an interesting game, nor it's a fun game. It's a useful game in many situations, uh, but you're not going to play that recreationally. You play that as just a randomness tool. I think the more interesting discussion around balance is what balance means, and I always think of it in terms of when I remember when I was playing Hearthstone, uh, this was a few years ago. I haven't played Hearthstone in a very long time, but I was keeping up and trying to be, you know, trying to be decent at the game, and I was following the meta, and there were so many posts on Reddit about how this X faction, Y faction was unbalanced, and, you know, one was OP, and finally it got super heated, and one time the Hearthstone developers released the actual statistics, and the deck that everyone thought was insanely overpowered had like a 52% win rate. It was barely, barely above 50-50. And the discussion then shifted to, oh, well, that's because a lot of people are playing the deck because it's perceived as being overpowered. And then that means a lot of weaker players are playing the deck and they're skewing the statistics. And if you if you took just the high-level players and looked at those stats, uh, then... Uh, it would be more unbalanced. And then it's a discussion of, well, if it requires a high-level player in order to execute, execute the deck correctly, then shouldn't that be rewarded more? And what does that mean for balanced? So not only do you have this idea of balance, but you have, should more complex strategies be rewarded more? In other words, if you have a foo strategy, a first order optimal strategy, which is something that uh, in some games you might call cheesing, where it's just like something repeatable and easy to do that gives you a decent win rate. So the classic example in board gaming is big money and dominion where you just take money. It's fine. It'll do fine. It'll beat people who don't know what they're doing. Once you play someone with some skill, you're probably not going to win in that case. If you take a foo strategy and then you take a much more complex strategy, shouldn't the more complex strategy 
be rewarded more if it's executed well. In other words, if there's greater risk in playing it correctly and it requires more thought and more skill uh, in the game, shouldn't that then be rewarded more than the super basic simple strategy? That's an open question. I'm, I lean toward the opinion that perhaps it should be more rewarded. So should more interesting, complex strategies be unbalanced then? And then also, what is the, what is the role of variability? So you have this idea that if you have a situation where you have a die, say, and it results, or let's look at an example where you have a 2d6 die roll. If you do a 2d6 die roll and chat, chart the odds of that kind of die roll, it results in fairly normal distribution. So a classic bell curve of results centered around a seven, rolling a seven. If you took a, what would it have to be, a D13 die, I think, or would that be six and a half? I don't know. If you took a die that had a flat curve, so all the different individual results uh, were equally likely, and again, the expected value, the average result averaged out to a seven, those are balanced the same way, but one is more variable than the other. How does that factor in into our perception of balance? Anyways, I've gone on about balance a lot. I know I have more podcasts I'm going to do about balance in the future, but the idea that balance is or is not important is, doesn't say a lot. I think there's a lot more interesting discussions to be had about balance in game design. Moving on to the second one from the Board Game Hot Takes podcast. Backing Kickstarters is a terrible bet. Um, I don't know. If you backed indiscriminately, perhaps uh, you'd feel like your money was wasted a lot. Is how do we how do we measure this of whether or not it's a good bet? Is is should is a Kickstarter a fifty fifty proposition? Man, yeah, maybe half of game Kickstarters do produce fine games. I don't know. I don't I don't engage with Kickstarter a lot. I'd just rather wait for retail. I just checked and I've backed nine games on Kickstarter over the years. So starting in 2012 till present day, I have backed uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I've backed 11 Kickstarters. Two of those were really, really tiny. So less than $5. One of them was a little tiny expansion. One was just a $3 game. Uh, it didn't turn out very well. Uh, three of those are from Red Raven Games because I was really into their games for a while. Uh, two of them are Button Shy Games, and then the rest are just random games. So Gloomhaven, uh, I got SPQF, which has been remade into into Fort by Leader Games. Uh, and then if you saw my unboxing video, you know you I got the 1861-1867 uh, game that came very recently. And then I just recently backed John company. So that's basically it for my Kickstarter. That's, that's, uh, just over one a year. So I'm not a big Kickstarter guy. And that's a, pre it's hard for me to criticize people who enjoy backing Kickstarter games because I think part of the enjoyment of it isn't just the final product. It's the process of, backing the Kickstarter, of uh, helping maybe a, a small-time creator uh, get their dreams made, or just getting a game before anyone else, or getting some of the exclusives. I don't know. I don't really care about it, but I can't blame if people have, I can't blame people if they have those kinds of preferences and want to experience that in their game purchases. Um, if you're trying to back Kickstarters because you're trying to find the next hot, great game, yeah, it's probably smarter just to wait until some reviews come out and then grab games that are getting really good reviews uh, or are getting recommendations from your friends who know your tastes. If that's your goal is to find the best games possible, yeah, Kickstarter, going crazy on Kickstarter is probably a bad idea. But it depends on what your goal is, what your preferences are. Final hot take, they say, is randomness is fun. Uh, yeah, randomness is fun. It's not the only aspect of fun. I think I'll, I'll, I'll put a mild agreement on this. Although, again, 
for the board game hot takes podcast, I don't know how hot these takes are. These are pretty mild takes, in my opinion. I will say more specifically, randomness is exciting. That's probably the more precise way of saying it rather than randomness is fun, but excitement is often fun, so I'll let them get away with that. I've discussed this before. Randomness is exciting, it's suspenseful, and that can be a very integral part of enjoyment in games, although not a necessary part. Uh, There can be other aspects of randomness or other aspects of games that create excitement and create suspense, uh, which is why I might use the term uncertainty, calling back to Greg Greg Kostikian's book, Uncertainty in Games. The uncertainty is a bit broader of a category and perhaps more useful. Uh, I think about that book quite often. It's, It's pretty good. Next hot take, we're going over to Matt, who says most 18xx games aren't good. And I'd say this is the hottest take so far. And I don't know what I think of it. I will say that I've gotten into 18xx because of people like Matt, and he has played many more 18xx games than I have. All of the 18xx games I have played... I would say are at least decent. Maybe they're not my cup of tea, but I can see why others like them. For instance, I know that Matt very much enjoys 1849. I played it once and found it kind of a frustrating experience. It's a very difficult 18xx game, but I can see why people like him really, really like it. Similarly, I can see why people don't like 1846 because it's much softer. It's uh, not as cutthroat as any as many other 18xx games, but I enjoy 1846. So I'm sure given all of the 18xx games being produced that, yeah, a lot of them are probably not very good. I don't have the experience to weigh in on that necessarily, but I'm curious. Someone asked Matt in response to this tweet, which ones aren't good, and I'm curious to see what his response is. He hasn't yet responded, so Matt, I'm, I'm, I'm super curious. Get on that. Finally, let's get to our final hot take, and this one's pretty hot. It's pretty spicy. The Mega Meeple says, don't hype up a game only because it is designed by a woman slash person of color slash slash LGBTQ slash etc. person. If the game is good, hype it up based on that. And this is an interesting take. And I do have a lot of sympathies to it. I do understand where they're coming from. But I would hype up a game, for instance, whenever v- or whenever Vlada comes out with his next game that's not a little party game, uh, I'm going to hype it up before playing it. Like, it's a Vlada game. I've at least respected every single game he's made, although I haven't played, like, his very, very first game. I've played, I believe, the rest of them. And my opinion of them are range from some of the best games ever made to, yeah, that was that was quite good. He's my favorite designer. I love Vlada. If I could hype up a game from Vlada based on just the person creating it, why couldn't I do that if I'm super excited that a woman or a person of color or uh, some other underrepresented person is producing a game? I don't see why those are different. Now, maybe you might say, oh, well, hyping up just because it's Vlada isn't isn't good either. We should all be little stoic robots and uh, reserve all enthusiasm until we've played the game and judge it just in a complete vacuum. I don't know. That's not particularly fun or interesting in my mind. I can see that why you might get annoyed by this kind of culture of hype and people being fake enthusiastic about things. And that I very much would agree with. However, I can think that a game isn't particularly good but also be excited that underrepresented people are becoming more and more prevalent in the board gaming design community. For instance, I'll give a very specific example. I think Wingspan is okay. I don't think it's an amazing game. I think it's all right. I think it's a little long for what it is. It's a little random for what it is. It's a little toothless for what it is. It's enjoyable. My my love of birds certainly helps a lot there and in the presentation of it all. However, I'm extremely excited 
that Elizabeth Hargrave is getting such recognition for that game as a, one of our most prominent female designers. Uh, and I, I, can, I can get really excited about that and see how she got all that news coverage uh, because of this nature game, because she's a woman in board gaming, all the work she's done in gathering statistics and data and information about women in board gaming, women, female designers, like all of that's awesome apart from the merits of Wingspan as a game. Those, can, those two opinions can be held at the same time and so I think you can hype up the idea that people who have not gotten the best shake of things, right? They, they have harder lives in uh, the pop culture internet community. And I'm going to say probably universally, women in the board game community have a harder life in terms of their online experience than I do. I've had some negative comments, nothing compared to what I've seen from even just random board game enthusiasts on the internet, not even people who have like YouTube channels or are shouting out strong opinions or doing reviews. I think we can appreciate when they do something as amazing as designing and getting a board game published, even if the game doesn't end up being your cup of tea or you see serious flaws in it or you think it's a terrible game we can we can have both of those opinions about the game and about the person and the idea that our hobby should become more diverse and more welcoming and uh, get these really cool unique perspectives in board gaming so I kind of agree but I kind of do not agree with this opinion uh, we shouldn't like a game just because of who the designer is if we actually have a bad experience playing it but we can celebrate that uh, people more and more people are entering the hobby more and more people are becoming designers and uh, the more welcoming and opening we are towards those designers the greater chance of great games in the future that's what we should be celebrating and at the same time we shouldn't be giving any uh, free handouts or no, that's a poor way of phrasing it we shouldn't be that doing that patronizing thing of, oh you did a good job I'm gonna go soft in your game if you're a reviewer review the game just as you normally would at the same time we can celebrate our hobby becoming better and uh, more welcoming to people that's where I'm gonna end it thanks for watching everybody if you have more hot takes to throw them in the comments send me an email whatever if you want me to cover something in the video and if you enjoy it let me know because i plan on doing more of these in the future i think they're very fun and i hope you enjoyed them don't forget to subscribe go to the thoughtfulgamer.com for all the stuff i do and uh like comment all you know you know the stuff. i i hate seeing it but if you say it it happens more and then that helps whatever talk to you next time <laughs> goodbye